today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am broadcasting to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great week and is having a fantastic Friday. Good to see you, Kyber, in class after a while. Hi, Zainab. Happy that you're in class on time. Fantastic. Uh, this class, we are continuing with listening section three and four practice and strategy from yesterday's section one and two class. If you missed yesterday's class, no worries. You can find it on the channel. It is recorded. You should see it in yesterday's videos. And uh, you can definitely still learn lots from this class as well. Uh, students, uh, materials, this listening, it's coming from aehelp.com for academic IELTS. And for general, check us out at gieltshelp.com on both of those websites. We have lots and lots of materials, strategies, videos to help you improve. In fact, we are one of the most successful online IELTS preparation companies. We've helped thousands of students over the years to succeed in their IELTS exam scores and emigrate to other countries and attend universities abroad. So definitely check that out. All right. Uh, students, uh, Rimple uh, is saying tomorrow will be my exam. Good luck on your exam tomorrow, Rimple. Uh, there aren't really any magic tricks to do well on the IELTS. You do have to show good language and communication skills. Uh, it's important to think critically, Rimple, in the exam. Remember, the IELTS is not just testing your English. It's also testing your communication and your critical thinking. That's the most important tip that I can give you for your tomorrow's exam. Keep in mind three questions. What, why, how? Okay, that will help you. All right, uh, good to see more members. Joanne, good to see you in class. Students, if you haven't downloaded our app, you can get it from your uh, app stores. Look for Academic IELTS Help or just search for it and uh, look for our shield. If you have questions about our products, uh, about the exam, send us an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Adi from Riyadh, I'm happy you're watching. Students from uh, Saudi Arabia, you can register for your next IELTS exam with us. We are British Council Partners. Um, okay, uh, before we get to uh, section three, section four, listening, I want to again, just like yesterday, uh, give you the first five minutes to ask me questions about the listening section, uh, maybe um, about how to show your answers or can you use capital letters? Yes, you can. Uh, how to solve multiple choice. I gave some information on that in yesterday's class. So if you have some questions, now is a good time to ask me. All right, uh, -uh Yush says, give me some tips to improve in section four. Okay, uh, Yush, uh, I think you asked a really good question yesterday also, and I, that's a good one um, for today. So. Thank you for that question. Um, so Ayush, or Ayush, is asking what are some, so question format, right? Ayush, what are some tips to improve band scores in section four? Okay, that's a good question. Ayush, here's my answer. Uh, think, of the questions as more complex forms of paraphrasing. In section four, examiners use grammar, descriptive, expressive, and synonym paraphrasing. OK. 
Okay. So uh, you, you might be thinking, what are you talking about? Um, if you're not familiar with paraphrasing, definitely learn more about it. Uh, paraphrasing means to say the same idea using different words. The exam is using paraphrasing uh, to increase the difficulty of the questions. And there's various kinds of paraphrasing. You can paraphrase with grammar. For example, I can say, if I, have a, if I had a million dollars, I would buy a large house. And then I can switch the grammar. I can say, I would buy a large house if I had a million dollars. Now I can make it even more complicated by replacing some words. So I can say, uh, given that I had a lot of money, I would buy a big home. Okay, so from the original, if I had a million dollars, I would buy a large house. I've now paraphrased even more. And then um, I can even paraphrase further. So I can say, uh, provided that I had an extremely large sum of money, I would purchase a dwelling with three bedrooms, uh, three bathrooms, two living rooms, and two kitchens. So I can continuously increase the difficulty, and I'm still saying the same idea. Section four, Ayush, uh, uh, uses this strategy. So even though you might be looking at a question that looks very different from what you hear, it could easily be the same idea, okay? And Shang Hung is helping us out in the chat and saying, yeah, there's synonyms, antonym, negatives, there's grammar, there's all kinds of paraphrasing. So for section four, be really familiar with paraphrasing and of course, practice it at home. So uh, you should practice this at home. When you have a practice exam, like um, the one that we're doing today, and here's our section four. So um, here you see our section four for today will be about climate change. And then here, um, humanity as well as other species may have to drastically alter there. So this one, you're basically completing the notes. And so what I would do at home to practice improving my skills for section four is I would look at a question like this and then go, okay, humanity, maybe I'll hear people in the text, as well as other species and different animals. May have to drastically alter there. Um, may need to completely change okay so here the question saying humanity as well as other species may have to drastically alter there now i paraphrased it people and different animals may need to completely change so there is a paraphrase okay and this is going to train my ears to hear the different ways of uh, listening to the information. Also, it will improve my vocabulary. So that's very effective, okay? All right, um, any more questions? Let's take one more question and then uh, we'll do section three, listening and practice. So. That was a good question. How do you improve your scores for section four? Train yourself to paraphrase as much as possible. That's the short answer. Okay. Um, Saima Imran says, please read my question. All right, Saima. So Saima says, sometimes I'm unable to understand the conversation. What should I do to answer the questions in that case? So, Saima, if uh, you really don't understand the conversation, first of all, you're in trouble, okay? It is a listening exam. You're probably not going to get a band eight, band seven, band nine 
if you don't understand a conversation. You might be able to squeeze out a band five because, interestingly enough, you can guess and infer about 40, 50 percent of the easier questions just by looking at the question. Okay, so Simon is saying, okay, what if I really don't understand what people are saying in the audio? So Simon's question is, what should I do if I really don't understand what is said in the audio? Okay, first of all, <laughs> what you shouldn't do Okay, number one, don't panic. Okay, panicking is your worst enemy. Okay, if you start freaking out, it's game over. So don't freak out. Don't be like, ah, I don't understand anything. Ah! Um, that's, that's really bad, okay? So don't do that. Uh, and just because you don't understand what's being said now doesn't mean you might not understand a minute from now what's going on. So just keep going with the audio, okay? So what should you do is focus on using logic and your own knowledge as much as possible to infer means make an educated guess or guess the answer okay that's all you can do in that case Saima um, and it's it's more than nothing okay so logic can actually help you a lot in the listening section in fact I want to be careful to suggest this but you can if you're really good with logic you can figure out close to half of the answers um, just by using your own knowledge and logic, okay? So let's look at this one. So this was section four here. Humanity, as well as other species, may have to drastically alter their something and something. So if you had to guess, if you didn't catch this, what would you guess is the answer for it? So what do you think might be, okay? the answer for these two blanks if you completely don't know what's going on. If you just have to use your own knowledge. Let's see if any of you might even get the right answer. If you think about it, humans as well, and it's talking about climate change. So keep in mind climate change, it means the world is getting warmer, in some places maybe cooler, uh, there's more gas in the air, more pollution. So humans as well as other species may have to drastically alter their what? So Bedrosina says maybe it's their behavior and attitude. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Charlie Sen says maybe it's habits. Okay, habits and behavior, those are synonyms. Okay, our behaviors are our habits. Okay. Um, and you're close, okay? Saima says it's uh, habits and habitat, maybe. Habitat is where we live, right? And we already see that. Notice how a lot of people are moving around the world these days, and many people are actually moving because the climate and the temperature is starting to get really difficult in their part of the world. It's way too hot or other problems. So habits, habitat, and in fact, students, for this one, yeah, habits and habitats is actually the correct answer. So again, even if you don't understand the audio necessarily, you might be able to pick up a couple of points by just using your logic and your existing knowledge, okay? So don't give up, stay focused, okay? Never give up. Giving up is for the weak. Never give up, okay? We're humans, we're at the top of the food chain. If our fathers and forefathers would have given up thousands and millions of years ago, then we'd still be food for sharks and tigers. We're humans, don't give up, okay? We have brains. 
It's the most powerful hunting machine in the known universe. All right. So, students, uh, let's do section three together. Okay. I'm going to play the audio from our website for this. Okay. Some of you probably have our premium package, so you know this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to play the audio. Please do not write your answers in the chat. Give everybody a fair chance to give their answers. Okay. We will go through at the end together. You can give your answers. All right. So, uh, just going to hop over to our website here. Now my volume is yes, definitely maximum. So if the audio is quiet for you, check your volume on your end and maybe use a headset. Okay. This is our academic website here. You can get our premium package by clicking that uh, big red button. You get a My Student account. At the top, you can log in. And then there's lots and lots of goodies for you there. You can use it on your phone. It integrates with your app. It's probably the most advanced learning software for IELTS in the world right now. Um, okay, then we open up our audio CDs. And we go to CD1 track 3 because it's test 1, section 3. So students get ready to listen and answer. Here we go. Now turn to section 3. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section 3. You will hear three students organizing a class project. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. I just got an email from the professor saying the due date for our European History Group project has been pushed back to Monday. Great, that means we'll have the weekend to work on it. I suppose that's good news, but I don't really want to do any homework on my weekend. I have planned to go away with my girlfriend for some relaxation this weekend. I suppose that's understandable. Maybe we should just have it done by Friday, the original due date. That gives us today and Thursday to finish it. We can do that, I think. I'm available tomorrow. How about we spend today planning it, a sign task to take home with us and do tonight, and then meet tomorrow and put it all together. Does that sound right? That works for me. That doesn't work too well for me. My afternoon is very busy. I guess I'll just have to burn the midnight oil tonight. What has you so tied up, Evan? I have a basketball game after school today. And then my favourite football team plays this evening at seven. It's okay though, I'll get the work done. Let's get started on the planning. All right, so we have to come up with a three panel poster about a topic in European history. I already bought the material for the poster, so we don't have to worry about that. How much was it? It was three pounds. Okay, we'll each give you one pound for the poster board. No, don't worry about it. My dad paid for it anyway. Sounds good to me. Right then, since there's three of us, my idea was that two of us could take care of the writing part of the project, while one of us could look after the artwork, making the poster look smart. I'll do the artwork. I think I'm a pretty good artist. I'll be happy to do half the writing. What topics are we going to choose? Well, the professor said the topic has to be an event that took place somewhere between 1400 and 1800, so we can't do either of the world wars. That's too bad. My dad is an expert on the Second World War and he could have helped me with my part. What are we going to do instead? You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. 
I was reading my textbook the other day and I read some really interesting information on the French Revolution. That's a really good idea. I know. How about instead of doing a summary of the French Revolution, we write about some of the people involved instead? Oh, I like that idea. So who are some of the important people? Well, there's the King, Louis the Sixteenth. Robespierre was important, I think. Yes, he was. And of course, Napoleon Bonaparte. We should have four people, so you can each write about two people. How about Marie Antoinette? Okay, so we have four historical figures. Each of you are going to write about two. Now we have to decide how much we're going to write. Remember, we have to fill up a three-board poster. That's a good point about the three-board poster. Maybe we should do a fifth person. Then we can have two figures on each side with one in the middle. Good idea. We can make the middle one really important. We'll make that one Napoleon. As for a fifth person, how about Voltaire? Good. So how about I do the important one on Napoleon and a smaller one on Robespierre? OK, and I'll do the other three. How long should each topic be? I'd say 200 words each for the small ones and 450 for the big one on Napoleon. I think that sounds about right. What do you think about meeting up later on? That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and always use that half minute to check your answers. Look for spelling mistakes. Look for mistakes reading the instructions. And always double check when you're transferring answers to the answer sheet in the 10 minutes. All right, let's go back to 21 and let's do these together. So, uh, instructions, pay really careful attention here. It's no more than one word for this question. Uh, what day of the week does the discussion take place? So what day? I mean, it says Monday. Charlie says, no, I think it's Wednesday. Kyber says, because Wednesday because of logic. Shahrani says Friday. And uh, Zainab says Friday. But Shang Hung also says Wednesday. All right. Um, so the correct answer is Wednesday. That's your easiest answer, WED. So that's the abbreviation for Wednesday in English. Now, if you know the spelling, it's fine. Um, in the listening, I probably would not write out the full word anyway, just to keep uh, focused on the audio. So I would keep it short. In the 10 minutes to transfer my answers to the answer sheet, if I really want to, I could write it out and write out Wednesday. But I definitely want to make sure that I have the correct spelling it has a kind of silent N Wednesday okay all right um, how do I know that yeah it's an inferred answer so again section three and four it's more challenging it's an inferred answer and if you're not sure where the answer is coming from or how that happened then check the transcripts the transcripts are the audio scripts in the back of any good IELTS product, okay? We definitely have transcripts for you for all of our exams. For this one, you'll find it on page 160 in our book number one. And um, you will actually see, we show you where it's coming from. So here, um, Megan, says, I suppose that's understandable. Maybe we should just have it done by Friday. Okay, so have it finished or done by Friday. The original due date, that gives us today and Thursday to finish it. So it means it gives us two days to finish it and it will be done for Friday. So it ha gives us today and Thursday to finish. That must mean that today is... Wednesday, right? Okay, again, if you're not sure where the answer is inferred from, check the transcripts in the back of your book. If your IELTS books do not have transcripts, 
It's not a good idea. You should then spend a couple dollars and buy some proper materials, okay? The IELTS is not where you want to save money. It's a life-changing exam. All right, um, so let's go back to the questions. Here we go. Complete the chart below, write no more than one word for each answer. So here the students discuss what they're going to do. The group tasks, and then they discuss when they want to finish by. So um, 22, the project today, and they're actually doing it during this uh, speaking or during this uh, audio. So you should be able to figure this out, even if you don't hear it, because they're actually doing this today. They're doing this in the audio. So what are they doing? Uh, Zainab says they're planning. Kyber says they're planning the project. Um, Shang Hung, Charlie, uh, Shakrani all agree that they're planning the project today. They're actually doing that in the audio, right? So I really hope that most of you, if you know the word planning, figure that one out. Okay. Amar says preparing. Uh, Amar, you really kind of pushing it. I don't think they'll give you the mark. Preparing is not quite the same as planning, uh, Amar, so I don't think they'll give it to you. Um, they're doing the project tonight, okay? So they're each going home and doing their part. And then they're putting the project together when? Charlie says they're putting the project together together tomorrow, okay? Today, tonight, tomorrow. Now, if you caught this part here about the Wednesday, so let's finish by Friday, that gives us today and tomorrow to get it done, um, then this one here should also make sense. So again, this is where logic, remember at the beginning you said, well, what if I don't understand the audio? Uh, a good guess here would be tomorrow for sure, okay? Now, tomorrow is a, um, is a regular noun, so you don't need to write the T as a capital, but you can because you see these ones are capital, so you could say tomorrow. The double R is very important. If you don't have that double R, you'll get it wrong for spelling, okay? So tomorrow... All right, uh, let's take a look at question 24, multiple choice. Uh, who paid for the cost of the poster board? That's described in a fair bit of detail, so it should be fairly easy. Uh, one of the women, one of the women's father, the man's father. Yeah, B, the speaker, the girl that's saying, I, bought the, I got the poster. She says, oh, don't worry about it, my dad paid for it. Anyway, what are dads good for? Eh, paying for things. Yeah, sure. So definitely um, one of the women's father paid for the poster. So B is the correct choice there. All right, let's keep going forward. So here it's no more then three words and or a number for each. So the topic must be an event that occurred sometime between the years something and something. Now here, of course, you need to have both numbers correct to get the right answer. So Kyber says 1400 to 1800 with a 14 dash to 18. Um, 14 and 1800 yeah those are all correct so uh, the best is 14 and 18 so use this slash you already have the and here another way you could do it is like this 14 18 or you could do it with a comma 18 I wouldn't use the word and or to because it's given in the question and the IELTS exam does say that you should not repeat words given in the question in your answers, okay? So this is a very good format. Uh, Zainab used it, that's great. You could also do it with dot, dot, dot or you could do it with a comma like this. 
Um, those are all good ways to answer for question 25. So that those both go into question 25. Um, the CR7 guy, I don't know if it's supposed to be the crazy guy, uh, 14,000 to 18,000, careful with your zeros. It's uh, far in the future. So not quite there yet. Okay, so 14 to 1800. Um, what topic would the male student like to write on but cannot due to the assignment restrictions? So what would the man like to, he's like, ah, it's too bad we can't do that because my dad's an expert. Charlie says World War II Kyber agrees and um, you're all using the short form, which is fantastic. That's what I would do, especially while I'm listening. World War II, okay, that's how we see it. WW2 with the big W. Yeah, this is okay. So if you go WW2, they'll take that, okay. Um, Ayush, if you write it out, it's the name of a war. So if you write it out like this, then you need the big W, the big W, and the big T. Why? Because it's a specific war. It's the name of a specific war, right? So Zainab says Second World War. That's correct also, Zainab, with capital S, capital W, W, okay? So those are all correct forms, all right? Uh, if you write it like this, that's going to be wrong, all right? It's not a correct way to abbreviate World War II. This is the most common way with the Roman numeral. Okay, of course, World War I is the same idea. It's the wrong answer there, but it's with the Roman numeral one. Okay. All right, and then we had this last kind of interesting question where you had to listen carefully, visualize this three-part poster that looks like this and you had to kind of visualize and see where these people were on the poster board okay and Napoleon was probably happy because he was at the top of his game uh, in the French Revolution but some of the others maybe not so much um, anyhow, uh, you had to match them, so you had to listen carefully whether these people were on the sides of the poster in the middle or they were not on the poster. So, uh, Robespierre, uh, was Robespierre in the middle or on the sides of the poster? So, A, B, or C, on the sides, in the middle, or not included? Okay, so you're telling me that one of these smiley faces is going to be Robespierre? Yeah, you're probably right. Okay, A. Uh, Rousseau. Rousseau on the side, in the middle. Where did Rousseau go? Number 28. Question 28, Rousseau. Kyber's giving us all of the answers in one go. It's okay. Santara says A. Tuvu says B. Um, Charlie says, see, uh, we did not hear the word Rousseau, okay? This name was not in the audio, so you should be able to guess C, because it's not in the audio, okay? Uh, King Louis the Sixteenth, King Louis the Sixteenth, number 29, King Louis the Sixteenth. Uh, if you know your European history a little bit, you know that King Louis was definitely a part of the French Revolution. So that would be A. And last but not least, Napoleon Bonaparte, a very famous historical uh, figure, uh, would have gone probably in the middle of the... I don't think that's what his hat looked like. But anyway, he had the big hat, right? The big... Big hat, big hat. Um, so Napoleon would have, yeah, definitely gone in the middle. So he would have mean B. Okay, so A, C, A, B are the correct answers. Okay. He was the leader 
of the French Revolution, Napoleon, right? A big player. So that's section three. Let's do section four. Section four is a little bit different from the other sections. There's no break to review answers. You just get one chance to review your answers. Again, I'm going to play the audio for section four. Please do not put your answers in the chat. We will go through the answers together after the audio. So just listen, answer on a separate piece of paper, and then we'll do it together afterwards. All right? So here we go. Let's jump back to the website. And here we go. Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section four. You will hear a professor discussing climate change. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hello class, hope you all had a good weekend. Today we will be talking about climate change. Life on Earth is going to have some adapting to do if climate scientists are correct with regard to their predictions of the Earth's rising atmospheric temperature. Humans and animals alike may have to change both their habits and habitats. The average temperature on the Earth's surface has risen by an estimated one degree centigrade in the last hundred years and this trend is continuing at an ever increasing speed. Until now it seems that business and the environment have met as adversaries but with the growing profitability of green products perhaps business can play a positive role in the fight to save the environment. There is an ever-growing consensus that the cause of climate change can be linked to human action. To be more specific, environmental change is caused by the emission of greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is chief among these. So what's so bad about things getting a little warmer, you may wonder? Weather patterns could become more extreme. The polar ice caps could melt. Sea levels could rise. And instances of famine due to drought could also increase. On the other hand, places such as northern Canada will likely become more productive for farming and mineral and crude oil extraction. What isn't positive about the permafrost melting is that the ice is a carbon sink and when it melts, it releases even more carbon into the atmosphere. It's clear that humans will have to change their relationship with the earth and its resources, but the debate remains over who should be leading that change. Advocates of personal responsibility claim that small personal measures, such as changing light bulbs or riding a bike, can make a significant difference. On the other hand, governments from developing countries are calling for economic reparations to be paid by developed nations because, after all, it is the rich who cause most of the environmental damage and made money from it. The other major group that has profited from our increasing environmental degradation are corporations. Business has always been about production and consumption. The invisible hand of supply and demand has long run our economic system, and now there is an ever-growing demand for conservation. The question is, when will consumer demand be commensurate with green technological advances that allow for environmentally friendly products to actually be more profitable than those that pollute? One option to speed up this process is to have governments impose true cost taxes on every product that is sold. This would force prices to include an economic pressure to purchase or use products that will not cause further environmental degradation or carbon emissions. There is little doubt that climate change is going to cause a drastic difference to our environment and way of life. The questions that remain to be asked revolve around how to solve the climate crisis and who will pay for the restructuring of our patterns of consumption that have led to these problems. With the ever-growing desire for green consumer goods, perhaps businesses can 
answer some of these questions by producing environmentally sound products. Even if business has a role to play in saving the environment, it is clear that we all need to do our part. That is the end of section four. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, so you have that half minute, check your answers, and then you have another 10 minutes to transfer answers to the answer sheet. So let's give the answers together for this part four. And as you probably realize, there was a lot of paraphrasing going on here. So the lecturer, the professor, was not using the exact same words as what you're reading. That would be just too easy. Uh, especially for a band eight, band nine student. So uh, you had to really pay attention to some key words. You had to pay attention to these background information. When is he talking about the background versus when he's talking about causes and implications. So really pay attention to the headings because these help you know where you are in the audio. So you could clearly hear him say, and the causes of the uh, of climate change, it's clear that it's da da da. So pay attention to those headings, pay attention to keywords, especially words that are around the blanks, right? Drastically alter. As we s practiced in the beginning, it wasn't alter, it was change. So humanity as well as other species may have to drastically alter there. What were the answers? We covered this at the very beginning. So the answers for this 31 was habits and habitats, okay? Plural on both. You need both of these words in the blank for 31 to get it correct. So Vanessa, absolutely right. Habits slash habitats, okay? All right, Earth's surface temperature has risen an estimated one degree centigrade in the past century. Businesses and environmentalists have been at odds. And here the speaker says have met as adversaries instead of odds. But the emergence of something may change this. What has emerged, what has been, what has appeared on our planet that's kind of a better choice. Um, so Amina and Kyber say green products. It's two words. So CR7 guy um, or Cray guy or something. I don't know what the seven is for, but uh, it's green products as two words. Okay, green products. A lot of plurals here. Watch your plurals, especially in section three and four, look for that article. Do you see an a uh, or an an? If not, it's a good chance that it's a plural. Okay. Here we go. So causes and implications, you hear the speaker switch to this topic. Climate change is, ca climate change is caused uh, by greenhouse gases. Specifically, what? What is causing? What kind? Um, he doesn't say specifically. I think he says chief among these, which means specifically, so mainly. Kyber says CO2, carbon dioxide. Charlie agrees. And yeah, CO2 is the simplest answer. They'll take that on the IELTS. That is carbon dioxide. So you need either CO2 or you need to write carbon dioxide. Now, if you're a chemistry student, you should be learning these in English because if you're planning to do university in your major, that will be important. Okay, uh, warmer weather can cause extreme weather patterns, ice caps could melt, and famine could occur. Northern Canada may become a beneficiary. Beneficiary means positive outcomes. As far as food production is concerned, it could become a more productive place for what? So Canada, if the weather becomes warmer, will have less ice and snow, will have more land 
and we could become more productive. I say we because I'm Canadian uh, for farming. So Canadians, yes, we're worried about climate change, but it's not as bad for us as it is for some other countries. So farming, yeah, absolutely. Especially up north. I know that some of my friends who live in northern Canada, they're now able to grow tomatoes and some other vegetables that they could not grow 10 years ago. But now they get ripe tomatoes uh, up in North Canada. So climate changes for sure. So farming, farming for 34. Uh, a, a big negative is that the melting permafrost contains a lot of carbon which will be released if the ice caps melt. Who is going to change? Okay, so who is going to change? People who think each person is responsible for themselves believe that small steps such as using energy efficient what? What's the answer for 35? Energy efficient crude cost? No. Energy efficient transportation, Charlie, is not a bad guess, but it's not the answer. Kyber says bulbs, but that's not enough. <laughs> Kyber adds light. Um, yeah, light bulbs, light bulbs. Okay, light bulbs, S. Because again, we don't see a uh, or an, right? Here we would see a uh, because it's a consonant, but we don't see that, so we need the S. Okay, light bulbs. Or riding a bike can help. Governments from developing nations want developed countries to pay them for causing such environmental damage. Fair enough. If you've ever been to Africa and you notice all of the garbage from wealthy countries on the beaches in some countries, they agree. All right, economics. Here we go. The something of supply and demand. This was quite tricky. It's for a band nine level student. You really had to catch it. It's an expression. The CR7 guy says, and Charlie agrees, it's the invisible hand. And you are right. It's the invisible hand of supply and demand. It means that, hey, people want iPhones? Guess what? Companies will make iPhones. Okay? So that's the invisible hand of supply and demand. We don't see it, but it's always there. People love bananas? Hey, guess what? We'll grow more bananas. So it's the invisible hand of supply and demand. People need it. Companies, businesses create it. We don't see it, but it's there. Has been in charge of economics for a long time. Absolutely. That's why we have billions of mobile phones around the planet. Uh, economists wonder when consumer demand for environmental products will surpass products that pollute. Hmm. I think we all wonder that and hope for that day to come sooner than later. Uh, one solution to this problem is to institute a something tax on each uh, purchase. That was a tricky one as well. These last questions are usually testing band 8, band 9. It's a special kind of tax. You had to catch it. It's a tax which um, basically forces people to be friendly with the environment. So if you buy batteries that you just throw away, then you have to pay an extra tax to buy those batteries. If you buy batteries that you can recharge, you don't have to pay that tax. And that tax is called a true cost. Why is it called a true cost tax? Because the true cost of a battery that you throw away is actually more expensive than what you're paying. Why? Because it's causing damage to the earth that we then pay to repair. We pay more money later to fix it, right? So that's why it's called a true cost tax. Oil, burning oil is another example, okay? 
This would provide an economic something to buy environmentally friendly products. So if we have to pay this true cost tax, then it would create what? to buy products that are more friendly for the environment. Um, value is not a bad guess here, Seven. That's a very good logical guess, but the right answer is pressure. So people would feel pressure to buy products that are environmentally friendly. If you have to pay a lot of extra money to buy plastic cups that you throw away, you would feel pressure to maybe just buy a regular old glass mug and reuse it, okay? Uh, conclusion, climate change is going to change our way of life. Who will pay for the necessary changes in our consumption patterns? With the growing demand for environmentally friendly goods, it is arguably something which can best answer this question. Number 39, who will likely step up very clearly and answer this question? CR7 guy says it should be the businesses. Rashi says, maybe the businesses. Yeah, and it is a plural here, students, so businesses. Absolutely, it's businesses which can best answer this, and we see it, right? So if you go to Starbucks, you see that they're trying to sell the reusable cups, and Starbucks, which is a coffee sh shop, it's a, co it's a franchise, a chain of coffee stores around the world. Many of you probably know Starbucks they will give you, I think, 10% discount on your coffee if you use a reusable cup and not a paper cup. If you bring your own cup, you get 10% off. So businesses are really trying to, at least some of them, change this negative trend. Uh, it is apparent, however, that something have a responsibility or someone have a responsibility to look after the environment. Who has the responsibility to look after our beautiful blue planet? Sierra 7 guy says, we all do. I mean, it says, yeah, we all do. Okay, again, use your logic. Okay, it's our planet. This is where we live. We share it with the animals and we borrow it from our children. We are all responsible to do our best to preserve it and to build a beautiful future together. So we all have a responsibility to look after our environment. Um, students, add up your marks. Uh, for many of you that were in yesterday's um, class for uh, this as well, um, please... Uh, Add up your scores, and we will check your band score in just a moment. Okay. Uh, Nima Tula, there are lot, there's true cost tax for a lot of other products, not just batteries, for gasoline, for disposable plates, uh, cups, um, for cigarettes, alcohol, there's true cost tax. Okay. All right, Zainab says, I got 30 out of 40. Okay. All right. Uh, when you go to our website, on our website, and I'll darken up the screen here a little bit. Let's hop back to the main site. You can use this for free. We have a score calculator. I'll show you what that looks like, okay? So let's check out your scores. And um, here we go. So at the very bottom here, we have a score calculator. It's an extra feature on the website. We have lots of features on our website. Um, so here, we have our score calculator, and this is the... Uh, listening section here, and then uh, if I type in 30 there, then it will tell me that 30 out of 40 is a band uh, 7, okay? So hopefully you can see that there. We all want to get at least 7. 
All right. Um, Rashi says 30 out of 40, so that's a 7. The CR7 guy says 37. I think that's going to be an 8.5. Yeah, so 37 out of 40 is an 8.5, Ben. That's very good. Amar Wadi says 23. Uh, 23 out of 40, Amar, is a band 6. It's not bad. Okay. Shakrani says 27. So let's check that out. Uh, 27 is 6.5 for the listening. Okay. That's great. All right. Um, so uh, if you want to check your scores, you can check it for the academic reading as well. Academic reading is different than general. So if you're a general IELTS student, please go to our general website with the green background at gieltshelp.com. Okay. And uh, check us out there. It also has a score calculator that is set for the general IELTS parameters. All right. Okay, students, that's it for today. Thank you for the feedback, Sierra 7 guy. I appreciate that. Um, if you have questions about the exam or our products, uh, send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. We are British Council Registration Partners. Our exams are the same difficulty as Cambridge. We have some of the most advanced uh, psychology and education uh, strategies for learning in our full course. aehelp.com for academic, gieltshelp.com for general. Download our app, Academic IELTS Help. That integrates with your website. We're releasing the general version soon. Thank you so much for watching, students. Two more classes tomorrow to finish the week. Have a great rest of your day and much love to all of you. Bye for now.